dear learner, welcome to our new topic of spreadsheets. Uh, this is your teacher, Omar. And today, in our lesson one, we shall talk about the introductory or the introduction part of spreadsheets as we move along. So I'm expecting that you grab your notebook and pen so that you can continue taking notes. And as, all, as I always say, if I'm maybe too fast, I want to believe that uh, the device that you are using, be it a mobile phone, a laptop or a desktop computer, it has got a feature that you can pause the video, for example, in areas where I'm faster than you in writing, you can pause the video, you can rewind. In fact, you can even save it for future viewing. Okay, let's get started. Uh, a spreadsheet is basically a ledger sheet that enables the user to enter and manipulate numerical data. Now, this ledger sheet is divided into a series of rows and columns in which data entries can be made. So you have got rows and columns and then the intersection between a row and a column is a cell. So it's just a series of cells where this numerical data can be entered and also manipulated. Now, there are two main types of spreadsheets, namely the manual spreadsheet and the electronic spreadsheet. A manual spreadsheet is a ledger book with many sheets of papers, again divided into rows and columns, where somebody can be able to write numerical data using a pen or a pencil. In fact, in most cases you discover that these manual spreadsheets are entered using pencils. Next time you get the chance, maybe you can visit the accounts clerk office or the bursar's office and you can be able to uh, catch a glimpse of uh, these uh, manual spreadsheets. You discover that uh, in most cases the entries are made with a pencil. I guess maybe so that they can be corrected easily if there is a mistake. Now on the other hand, we have got electronic spreadsheets. This is an application software that resembles the manual spreadsheets because it has got also rows and columns, but instead data is entered and manipulated mathematically using formulae. Now formulae is just the plural of formula which we shall look at in the coming lessons. So here you just use your keyboard and mouse. Data is entered, entered through the keyboard or even the mouse and then you can be able to use some of the features like formulae and functions in order to manipulate that data. Now on the screen you can see here there is a screenshot of a, a an, an electronic spreadsheet which uh, in my case here is Microsoft Access but again we shall go to details of that in the coming lessons. Before that let's look at some of the advantages of electronic spreadsheets over the manual spreadsheets. Now number one an, ele an electronic spreadsheet has got a large virtual worksheet where data entries can be made and manipulated. Now, when we talk about a virtual worksheet, meaning that this worksheet is not physical, like in the uh, traditional uh, manual spreadsheet. So again, the space, the worksheet is that space where we enter the data, as we shall see just in a moment to come, is actually almost unlimited if you compare with your manual spreadsheet. Something else is that um, Electronic spreadsheets have got what we call functions or formulae. These functions and formulae also we shall discuss them in detail later, but they enable the user to quickly manipulate mathematical data. As I've said, we shall come to them in the next lesson or lesson two. Now, number three is that um, the electronic spreadsheets use the three main advantages of the computer. For example, um, computers are fast, they are accurate, they are efficient. So meaning that um, 
they also inherit those good properties of computers they have also have better formatting and editing uh, features which the manual spreadsheet does not have remember formatting refers to enhancing the appearance of a document and editing refers to making the necessary changes to uh, or on an existing document if you can recall what we did in uh, word processors um, another advantage is that um, it utilizes the large storage space available on uh, secondary storage devices and media so again here it means that um, using a small physical storage space maybe on a device like a flash disk you can be able to save much 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 more amount of data in a relatively uh, tiny space as compared to if you are using the traditional spreadsheets because these uh, manual spreadsheets must be stored in cupboards and cabinets and shelves which they really take a lot of office space another advantage is that you can easily be able to modify uh, the contents of these electronic spreadsheets while in the manual one um, it has to be done manually for example you must have your pencil and a rubber or eraser which are may not be very very, very easy on your site spreadsheets are also efficient and can be used to perform complicated uh, calculations um, something else is that um, spreadsheets have got a, a very good feature that is called auto recalculation or automatic recalculation now this feature is whereby you are able to adjust for example because i've said that we shall look at functions and formulae later where maybe we shall cement uh, this this particular explanation but just an overview this is whereby if you create a function to calculate for you a certain value when you change the values of certain cells then the result of that function or formula is automatically adjusted depending on uh, how it was changed now if it were a manual spreadsheet then it will mean that uh, the answer the result must be manually rubbed and then you do the recalculation uh, manually and then you enter or you write the correct one another advantage is that um, a spreadsheet produces network why because the traditional paper and pencil and rubber is put aside now away from advantages of electronic spreadsheets let's look at uh, components of a spreadsheet so when i talk about a spreadsheet from now on i'm talking about the electronic spreadsheet so i shall replace the, the electron the phrase electronic spreadsheet with just spreadsheet the first component in an electronic spreadsheet is what you call the worksheet. Now, the worksheet, this is that work area. Remember, in work processing, we talked about the work area. The work area is that space that the user types his document. Now, in spreadsheets, the worksheet is that area where data is entered and manipulated. And it is divided into rows and columns as we shall see just in a moment now a collection of worksheets form what you call a workbook now a workbook is now that file that you save after or uh, during the use of this electronic spreadsheet so a workbook can comprise of several maybe one or more or several worksheets now, like what you are seeing right now on the screen is actually a worksheet. And you can see that this worksheet is divided into rows and columns. And this window almost just resembles the Microsoft Word window, but maybe with some changes. Like, for like example, you can see here, I've tried to mention some of the parts of this window. So maybe because of time, you can pause right now and then 
you can note down those parts. So this one here is a, a worksheet. You can see the columns running downwards, the rows running across. And something else that you're going to notice is that um, columns are labeled using letters. You can see them here where I'm moving the mouse pointer. And rows are labeled using numbers. Now, the reason for this is that so that we can be able to refer to each of these cells uniquely or independently. We shall come to that one later. So you might want to pause the video and then take note of these parts because we shall be mentioning them by name as we move across things like the formula bar, the name box, the status bar, and all those that you can be able to see on the screen. Let's move. The second component of a spreadsheet is the database component. Now, remember, we mentioned that, um, in ap that application software can be divided into categories such as word processors, spreadsheets, databases, graphic software, and so on and so forth. Now, in spreadsheets, we have got some components of databases that have been incorporated inside spreadsheets. We have tools. When I say we, we have components, we have tools that we normally use in spreadsheets, but they traditionally or usually belong to databases. And I've given examples here that you can see things like filtering, using forms, validating data, calculating uh, subtotals and grand totals, and so on and so forth. So these features that have been borrowed, let me just use the term borrowed from databases and incorporated in spreadsheets form the database component of a spreadsheet. The third component that we have are graphs. Graphs are also called charts. A chart is just a, a graphical representation of data on a worksheet. Now, graphs are very, very important because they say that um, a picture speaks a thousand words. Now, you can use a graph to present data that is very, very vast and very complex, but is easy to understand and, and digest if it is represented diagrammatically. Like you can see on your screen, I've got uh, some examples here of charts, pie charts, line graphs, bar charts, histograms, and so on and so forth. Let's move on. Um, apart from the three components of uh, spreadsheets, let's look at application areas of spreadsheets. Here, I'm talking about areas where spreadsheets are used. Now, the first one and the most basic and the most common is accounting. Remember, if you hear the term accounting, what comes to your mind is money. So, when we talk about things like preparing budgets, like for example, you can see on your screen here is a small screenshot of some accounting. There's a balance sheet, there is an income statement, and so on. So spreadsheets normally provide an easy way. They, they come with tools that can be easily used by people like accountants in order to record their daily transactions and also keep their financial records, or what we call bookkeeping. Now, some of those tools or functions are things like sum, average, product, and so on, which we shall come to when we shall talk about uh, functions. Another area where spreadsheets are used is in what we call in data management. Now, just in a few minutes ago, I mentioned the database component of spreadsheets. Now, those tools that form the database component of, of spreadsheets are what we actually use for data management. For example, things like sorting data, filtering data, using forms, calculating totals and subtotals, and so on. Those are the tools that we normally use for the management of data. Think about, for example, when your teacher presents you with an exam, marks the exam, and then performs what we call the exam analysis. That is one very, very good example of data management, whereby 
maybe the exam is ranked and then analyzed in ways um, that uh, it, is finally, it is finally presented to you. That is one example of management of data. And usually these, these tools, the tools that form the database component of, of spreadsheets come into play. Another area <coughs> of application, sorry, <coughs> sorry, sorry, is what we call scientific research. This is where scientists normally, after when they are, they are doing their research, the data that is collected is entered into spreadsheets and then from there they can be able to analyze their results maybe before coming up with the conclusions or decision making. Another area is what we call statistical analysis. Now, in statistical analysis, when you just hear the term st statistics, things like average, median, standard deviation, mean, and so on and so forth, these are some of the tools that we normally use to do statistics. Again, the same, same example of, of a teacher compiling student marks also arises here. Yeah, because we are going to find the mean, the average, deviations, uh, and many, many others. The last area where spreadsheets uh, are also commonly used is what we call in in forecasting. Now, when I talk about when I, I mention forecasting, what I mean here is that uh, it's also called the what if analysis. It's a feature that is used to find out the effect of changing certain values on a worksheet onto other cells. E.g., for example, if I were entering data about a company's sales expenses for example and profit so I could, I could be asking myself what if I reduce the cost of transport by say 50% what will uh, it have what impact will it have on the final profit that is an example so it's what is called what if analysis if I do what if I do this what will be the effect on the other side that's what we refer to as forecasting or what if analysis. Actually, fo forecasting is just pre prediction. So if I change this value, what do I predict that change uh, would have the impact on the other? And here, again, that feature called automatic recalculation really comes here into play because when I change a value, then the end result on the other side is also updated automatically, and that is automatic recalculation. Thank you, Lana, for attending this lesson. Uh, remember, this is just lesson one, the introduction part, so watch out for lesson two, and above all, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel because we shall be posting more and more, and uh, I'm sure you don't want to miss. Otherwise, bye-bye, take care.